Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Joda Festival. Welcome back, everybody, to another Dominaria United standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing well today. Just want to remind you before we jump into what is a very silly deck, uh, we do have a Dominaria United giveaway going on right now. If you are not already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. That's one of four free ways that you can enter, the others being following us on Twitter, on Instagram, and then joining our Discord channel. Links for all of those are down below. If you happen to be subscribed on Patreon or join on the YouTube membership side of things, uh, you actually get an additional bonus entry into the giveaway. So I do encourage you check that out. We're giving away a free draft booster box of the set on September 16th. Really stoked for that. But let's talk about today's deck because this is a very silly one. Uh, again, we're trying to pump out multiple uh, videos a day, so we'll see if this actually gets uh, thrown out in tandem with some others, but this is a janky one. This is our first true, maybe, jank deck of the season, uh, and it's all built around legendary creatures, and in particular, Joda the Unifier, one of the new cards from Dominaria United. You'll notice a lot of new cards in this deck. Uh, this is a 5-5 five five for Wooburg. Uh, legendary creatures you control get plus X plus X, where X is the number of legendary creatures you control. Whenever you cast a legendary spell, not just creature, from your hand, exile cards from the top of your deck until you exile a legendary non-land card with a lesser mana value. You can cast that card without paying its mana cost, and then you put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. Uh, that mixed with Relic of Legends, uh, which taps for any color, but also you can tap legendary creatures to play more stuff, uh, basically means we're trying to ramp ourselves into having a ton of legendary creatures on the board and then getting ideally to a Storm the Festival uh, so we can get even more. That's basically it. Uh, we get to feature a lot of really awesome cards. We've got this little guy, uh, Rat Radadrobic. Uh, uh, of Uber, of Urborg, not Uborg. <laughs> uh, basically allows a lot of recursion to the deck, so uh, if something dies of one of our legendary creatures, we get a token that's a copy of it, uh, except it's not legendary and it's a 2-2. Two -two. Uh, it does get Vigilance thanks to this as well, but uh, we also have Queen, uh, Alenol, Alenol, Alenol? Uh, I'm really terrible at names, guys, but if one or more creature tokens would be created under your control, those plus a 1-1 one, one white soldier token are created instead. The idea being we can capitalize on getting a lot of tokens on the field. Goro Goro is in here. Uh, the new king is in here as well, giving hexproof and indestructible, uh, as well as just creating more tokens. We got Squee in here that's going to be able to create some tokens as well. Uh, and then, of course, Adeline. Thalia does slow a lot of decks down, so it's worth having in here. I'm not 100% sure on Thalia, though, because it does slow down our Storm the Festival, Mirror Box, and Relic as well. So we'll see how that goes. And then Catilda is in here, which is actually just a phenomenal card. Uh, and then, of course, the Wandering Emperor. Very demanding mana base, as you could expect. Uh, and I'm not expecting to win a lot. I'll just be honest. We're just going to have fun today. This is a blast of a deck to play. I've only played it a couple times, but really, really enjoyed it. So let's jump in, guys. Let's not waste any more time. Let's see what we can do. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. This is definitely a relatively easy keep. Uh, we do have a number of things we'd like to get to. The Plaza of Heroes really helps us out here because obviously most of our deck is just legendary spells and anything that isn't is generally colorless. Uh, and so this actually is a phenomenal card for us. Uh, you can actually exile it, target legendary creature gains hexproof and indestructible as well. That's a very handy little tool. I'm actually just gonna lead with the farmland. Uh, only because uh, we are going to want extra white sources here, and I don't want to throw out pain lands in the early turns if I don't have to. Uh, just because they come into play untapped regardless, I'd rather not take the extra damage <laughs> if we don't have to. Uh, so, King Darren or Adeline is basically going to be the choice here. Uh, generally, I lean towards Adeline first. I feel like that's probably just a better bet. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and throw Adeline out. Uh, what this allows is for us to play King Darren next turn, uh, if we would like, and then get in for an attack with a little bit of extra power behind us, since this does pump up all of our creatures. Uh, we can also just play this, which is really, really nice. Uh, okay, cool. This is a very good card, uh, by the way. Ooh, that's not a bad pickup. Um, 
I'm gonna throw this down. I'm gonna throw King Darren out. Uh, and I will just go ahead and attack in here. We're just trying to get as much pressure on board in the early turns as we possibly can. They're gonna, I assume, okay. I was gonna say, I kinda thought they might uh, go the other way, but that's fine. So we do get damage in for four. We do break that shield counter as well. Uh, and we'll see what the opponent ends up doing this turn. Uh, looks like Bant is the play. Brutal Cathar, huh? Brutal Cathar is brutal. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so, I mean, we don't really have a play in response to that. So I think we just let that happen. Interesting. Uh, do we think they have a spell here? Probably, but I do think we just kind of go for it. Kind of a weird attack on their end, to be honest. But yeah, I was going to say, I don't know that that was meant to, to happen. Um, so, how do we want to do this? Uh, I think we'll do this. Um, so this is where we kind of get to, to play a little bit with the mana because this relic allows us to essentially tap for two mana. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, and basically we're just setting up a turn where we're getting a little bit of recursion and protection in. So if they have another brutal Cathar, it's going to kind of suck. Uh, but it might be a little bit trickier for them to, to make something work here. Uh, again, this deck isn't necessarily the best deck in the world, guys. This is just a silly fun deck, uh, and so I'm hoping that we can just enjoy uh, some fun play patterns. I want to go crazy with this. I want to get Jota down. Uh, would love to get Mirror Box down as well and just be able to kind of shove through our deck with tons and tons of power. I certainly think that's a possibility, so uh, we'll see. I'm curious if they try and exile King Darren. Yep. Uh, so... Uh, this is kind of fun, so we get to sacrifice in response and then get a token <laughs> uh, that has hexproof. <laughs> uh, so that really helps. Um, yeah, I love that play. That was really good. Uh, so that was just a wasted Wandering Emperor play, essentially. We also now have the ability to play the other King Darren because this is not legendary. Uh, so we actually get to pump our board up even more. Uh, so that was just really sick. I'm into that. Uh, <laughs> it's really fun. Uh, this also has a ward cost, so even if they could target it, they can't kill it this turn. Uh, and so, yeah, I feel like um, I feel like we're doing okay here. Surprisingly so. Uh, I'll be honest. I didn't anticipate that, but pretty happy. Uh, what would be the best draw that we could have? Probably like a Joda, honestly. Uh... Okay, so they will get the attack in. That's fine. I don't particularly care. All right. That is not super helpful. Um, do we Xander's like cycle this? Probably worth cycling, right? Just in case. Uh, I'd like to see what we draw, you know what I mean? Just to see if we can maybe do a little better here, but uh, it looks like that's not going to be the case, so that's fine. Uh, yeah. So we could play the mirror box, to be fair. Uh, we would have to tap a few things, but that's certainly a possibility. Uh, alternatively, though, I think I just want to... Hmm. No, I kind of do want to, to play the mirror box. We should have played it first, so that was definitely a mistake. Uh, but that's okay. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Tap you. Uh, let's do this. Tap you. And then we tap that. This is all fine. I'm not particularly worried about this. Um, cool. Cool. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, again, worth noting, we can instant speed sacrifice this if we need to, uh, just to get a token and then be able to block. So <laughs> we've got some some interesting little play patterns that we can manage here if we'd like. Hands Walker to its owner's hand. Okay. I really hope they target the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I am going to do this uh, just to make this trickier for them. <laughs> uh, sick. 
<laughs> I don't know that that was the right call, but that's a funny call. So I'm, I'm playing this for the fun of it. Uh, all right, sick. So six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we do have lethal uh, this upcoming turn. Again, the ward cost on the, uh, the zombie here makes it really tricky for them to actually target it as well. So basically they could attack for two and like that's it. Um, they can't target the tokens now. So basically we just hope we can draw something. Like if we draw a Joda, I mean, that'd be really sick. A Storm the Festival would be really awesome. Uh, just to give ourselves like a little bit of an extra boost. Uh, technically we have lethal on board, so they're gonna have to be very careful about all of this. Uh, and in fact, even if they kill the mirror box, we've got what? five six seven eight nine ten eleven so we do still have lethal even without the mirror box in play uh so i'm pretty happy with this uh it seems like the opponent didn't think through that play pattern a little bit just from the standpoint of we did have the option to sacrifice we didn't have to uh so maybe they were just forcing us into that but i feel like that was not necessarily the best play uh from the opponent and that's okay i mean new cards guys like totally totally get it uh, but I think that Wandering Emperor play was a very similar one where, you know, kind of did the same trick twice here. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, uh, I think the opponent's not super stoked and just kind of curious on what the heck they're supposed to do here. Okay, awesome. Very good, very good. Uh, again, just really want to draw, like, a heavy hitter of some kind. Uh, smart of them just to kind of shields up here a little bit. They certainly need, you know, a little bit of a blocking force so they can stay in the game. Curious to see if they actually attack with the Ledger Shredder. Um, sure. Great card. Great, uh, great powerhouse there, but um, not really anticipating that being the most helpful thing in the world. Uh, worth noting, we probably need to deal with the Wandering Emperor, but I'm kind of just going for lethal. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Joda's really good. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Um, I think we just attack all here. Again, this is scary, but not the end of the world. All of our stuff has vigilance, so like this can't really, <laughs> can't really do too much. Um, they can kill one of our three threes. Worth noting, uh, which is annoying. Not the end of the world. Sure. They are so hell bent on not uh, losing that. I'm gonna go ahead and do this just to give this protection through the end of the turn. Uh, all right. And now we pass. So now the hope is just to draw another legendary creature. So that way we can uh, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully uh, start to spin the wheel with Joda. We do have the mirror box. So like we've got safe plays regardless. Um, if we draw like a, another Urborg or another Joda, it's fine uh, because we do just have the mirror box play. So what an interesting game. <laughs> Other zombies you can draw out of vigilance. That's so good. Okay. Uh, this is a very good new card, by the way. Silverback Elder, so sick. Uh, look at the top five cards you can put on land card. Okay. Very curious to see if they actually get the opportunity to utilize it. Uh, because it's a very strong possibility they might not, depending on what we draw. So, we'll see. They're just spreading the board out as much as they can. Makes sense. All right. Very curious. Wow, they are attacking in. Fascinating. Okay. Sick. Uh, so, again, worth noting that they could kill Joda, uh, and we still get another Joda. <laughs> oh, not what we wanted at all. Um, okay. I think we just send both of these here. So what this means is... Uh, they're probably going to want to kill the... Uh, well, we'll see. We'll see. Not 100% sure what the best play here is, to be honest. We're kind of stalling because we're not drawing very well. Uh, which is annoying, but not the end of the world. They can't exile this with the Wandering Emperor unless they just happen to have another one. 
which is fine. Okay, they're gonna take seven. Pretty big swing. Um, Alright, so I do anticipate they might have another of these. Okay, this is gonna come in transformed. 3-3, three, three, sure. Hmm. Alright. We'll see. We only need to deal two damage to them. <laughs> we do also have King Darren. I keep forgetting that we have King Darren. Like, we can utilize the uh, the ability on King Darren. We definitely should have done that. I wonder if... Yeah. Could have done that a long time ago. <laughs> All right, sick. I don't know why we didn't before, but that's fine. All right. <clears throat> I keep forgetting that King Darren has like a, a true activated ability. That's really nice. Okay. We only have to deal two here, so I'm just trying to spread out as much as we can, I think, now. Uh, they can plus up on something. I mean, this is a scary board, so. I'm trying to think what we could get here. Storm the Festival would be amazing. Uh, just to, to deal as much as we can. And get as much down as possible. Like, if we got a Goro Goro somehow pulled off a haste turn, we could just kind of surprise kill him. <laughs> Should be really funny. Okay. I mean, we just take four. Hoping for the best. That's not the best. <laughs> um, ugh. Okay. Hmm. What is going to be the best option here? We do not have card draw in this deck, like, at all. Okay. Just because. Um. Hmm. Can just kind of force the issue a little bit uh, with this. Sure. We'll see. Again, if Joda dies, it's it's okay uh, because we've got this. I don't want Joda to die, but they're gonna have to kind of trade for it, so that's helpful. This is just kind of a purely like, hey, you have to block scenario. This probably isn't a good attack, to be honest. Um, but that's okay. Trying to think if we had attacked with everything. They would have had to block everything. Uh, but they could have killed the Urborg. Like, they could have killed a lot of stuff if they had done that. Or if we had done that. I think we're burning out here, sadly. It's been a long game, too. <laughs> we may only get two in today, guys, unfortunately. Uh, just do that. All right. Weird that they double blocked like that. Not really sure why they would have. Yeah, that seems kind of weird. Um, okay. That's scary. Okay. Can't do that, can we? Ugh. Can we do this, actually? Okay, we made it. Uh, I mean, we still die, like, in the air. We're just dead. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and give it to him. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and jump into our next game. This month's Patreon rewards feature some of the most impactful lotuses in Magic's history. Check out all the details and sign up at patreon.com slash itresolves. All right, guys, here we are for our next game. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we keep this just on the back of the two relics, honestly. <clears throat> um, we do need another land, of course, but any land actually gets us to the relics, so I'm not as concerned. I don't love the pain lands, naturally. Uh, we kind of talked about that in game one, but we'll do the best we can. Um, okay, well, there's our land. 
Uh, pretty happy to get the Sundown Pass as well, because it is our second white source, so th that does give us Adeline and the Wandering Emperor at any given point, which is super nice. Uh, this is going to be a very annoying deck. We basically just need to try and Wandering Emperor to exile the Delver uh, as soon as we possibly can. Thankfully, they did not flip it that turn, uh, which is pretty huge. All right, Plaza of Heroes, also not bad, uh, because it does. it's basically a, a rainbow land for us. All right, so Boon of Safety doesn't actually get around the Wandering Ember, which is quite nice. Um, they are leaving it up, of course, so that's fair. Okay, uh, let's throw you out. Um, do we go for Adeline or do we go for Relic? I'm going to go for Relic. Uh, this guarantees us a little extra mana next turn. Uh they are going to get a pretty solid attack in here regardless of what happens which does kind of suck but like can't really do too much about it and i'm wondering which we actually want to take care of here um and how likely it is that they can just block this <laughs> um so if we do that if we do that we can Hmm. So we can just Joda, which is a really fun play. I'm going to try for this. This is kind of a silly play, probably, because uh, we're taking a lot of damage to do this, and they have quite a bit of scary stuff on the field. I'm assuming they can counter this also. Now they're just going to draw a card. Okay. One to the bottom. That's a good sign. Probably just a land on the opponent's end. All right, this is this is hope, very hopeful uh, or wishful thinking in terms of actually trying to win this game, but we will try. What? That's a weird. It. That's a strange card. All right. <laughs> okay, so we can wandering emperor, uh, which should at least gain us some life and a card since we do have Joda on the field. So they're gonna go ahead and phase that out before we even target it, which is not really a good call. Uh, normally you would wanna do that in response, but that's fine. Uh, King Darren, I will take. Perfectly reasonable. Um, let's make sure we gain a little life here, hopefully. Uh, I'm just trying to get as much out of here as we can. Uh, sure. Okay. That's unfortunate, not the end of the world. Um, let's see. All right, we're gonna do this because we kind of just need to. Uh, this also has a lifelink, so this is super helpful. Uh, and we get Thalia, which is truthfully a really good one. <laughs> um, all right, here's to hoping. <laughs> uh, the The fact that Katilda has lifelink is actually pretty huge for us, uh, just because it does give us the out of like blocking, gaining that life back, and potentially staving off an attack from them because now they're having to pay extra for all of these cards. So I don't know. I mean, we'll we'll see. Uh, Katilda was probably about our best bet, though. I would have loved to have gotten this down as well, just to kind of guarantee we've got a little bit of a safety net uh, because they could just phase out the Katilda, um, which would basically mean we lose immediately. <laughs> uh, but we'll see. They really preemptively went for the uh, slip out the back, which is kind of an interesting one. Uh, this will also probably be our last game. Unfortunately, that first one went kind of long, so... I will say, though, this is exactly what we wanted. Like, this is the kind of play pattern that we were shooting for. Uh, and so I am pretty happy about that. We don't have the mirror box play, but I don't think we need it. Uh, I think the mirror box is a bit of an extra. Uh, and so I think that's okay. Wow, they are going for this. Okay. Uh, that's fine. Totally fine by me. Uh, seriously. 
Aggressive plays. Um, hmm. I think we just kill here. So we gain six out of the deal regardless, and then we take five. So we're gonna basically net one life. Yep. Uh, so that's fine. In fact, really good. Um, <laughs> okay. All right, let's see. What is going to be the best bet here? Um, we can just storm the festival and hope for the best, uh, which I don't mind, but I think I'd rather kind of go this route. Yeah, so let's do this. This is just a safe play. There's another Katilda. Uh, we actually will play one of these and keep this one. Uh, that puts Katilda in the graveyard, which just means we can potentially use the other Katilda. Uh, let's do this. Let's put the counter here. Um, let's do this. Do this and probably just this. I think we're just going for max damage this turn. So this is going to give us a Goro Goro. Which actually means we can get haste to this as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do have to sacrifice the attack of one of our creatures, but I think that's actually okay. Auto pay. Um, we'll do this. All right, this is a really big attack. <laughs> Hopefully that's enough. <laughs> They're tapped out. Uh, we're going to gain 10. Yeah, this is... <laughs> I mean, that's a really cool... That's a really cool play, right? Like... <laughs> Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. All right, that was really fun. That was what we were hoping to see, guys. Let's talk about this deck. All right, guys, so again, this was definitely an ambitious deck. Let's be very clear. I also pulled the original list uh, from an article, and I, I apologize because I don't remember. I don't believe a content creator created that. I don't know. I don't remember. I did change a couple of things, including the, the mirror box was kind of my idea. Uh, but all in all, man, that last game is exactly what we wanted. That was an absolute blast. Uh, our first real jank deck of the series, too. Um, I'm really, really stoked about that. I think there are so many fun uh, and exciting deck ideas and options with Dominaria United, and I think uh, we get to showcase that with decks like this. And so for that reason, I am so stoked to be able to show you guys this. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, again, a little bit more of a janky deck, but definitely a, a very fun one and hopefully one that we could build off of. Uh, and so if you you've got some ideas, feel free to take this list, do what you can with it, because uh, I do think this is a really, really good one. So guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll continue to get you some more gameplay up over the weekend. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to enter the giveaway, and we'll see you guys again very soon.